Good afternoon, everyone. I think this is episode seven of the Entertainment Room podcast. Uh, it's been a while. We uh, we had our Easter break and we went away for a month. Then we came back. We wanted to give it a week before we started again, and here we are. Unfortunately, my co-host Jacob Ottaway is uh, no longer here. Um, well, he's just not here for this week. He'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> she made it sound like he died. He's no longer with us. He's no, no ja- longer with us. Jacob's at work. Um, uh, emergency work shift. Yeah. Uh, he'll be back. Jacob you... has a job. Um... Yeah. But you've got me. Yeah, I'm here with Macaulay Moffat this week. Woo! Woo. Uh, I've been on before. Fantastic. I can't wait. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's been a bit of a slow week for film news. Um, when we were trying to we were trying to plan this podcast, and honestly, we were struggling to talk about anything other than Disney and Game of Thrones. Uh, that has failed. So now this is going to be an entirely Disney and Game of Thrones themed podcast this week. If you haven't seen Endgame or if you're not caught up with Game of Thrones and you would like to see that, um, then I would suggest not not watching this, uh, not watching this, not listening to this <laughs> until you, you've done that. Yeah, don't don't listen to us because <clears throat> um, we're going to review Endgame because we saw it last week and we're going to talk about how uh, where Game of Thrones is at right now. So and it's pretty difficult to review. Yeah. When we review Endgame, we'll understand that it's difficult to review it without saying spoilery stuff yeah. so so uh yeah and obviously the big story of this week was that disney have released their full list of their planned upcoming films what what date does it go up to is it 2024 uh, 2027 wow is, although <laughs> although 2024 to 27 has one film a year that they've announced um i don't know why in 2023 it says untitled disney live action like it doesn't really narrow it down like i would have assumed there was going to be some kind of disney live action that, film then is that pinocchio possibly actually that's a very good shout although i don't know if disney live action means previously animated into an into a live action film because in 2022 there are one two there are four disney live action films i mean i think the two that they've announced that we haven't heard much about are pinocchio and mulan yeah pinocchio i know guillermo del toro last time i checked was behind it mulan i don't i, I hadn't heard anything from it apart from they were att- attempting to cast her yeah i'm not sure um I like the Disney live action things. Um I've seen I saw the Jungle Book. Um I know Dumbo is is still in or maybe just left yeah. cinemas. I didn't actually get to see that. Um I was never really the biggest Dumbo fan. It's a good film, but I I, I would probably see the live action when it's out of cinema. Um obviously I'll go and see The Lion King because that yeah. looks very very good. Um they've obviously done like the Cinderella and the other live action things, but obviously they're now going through more of a phase where they're directly devoting time to making the old animations into live action films and some of them work some of them don't um i love the jungle book and i think lion king looks just as good yeah i mean i'm looking forward to lion king the main one i was looking forward to was pinocchio because guillermo del toro is like a master when it comes to practical effects and pinocchio scared me as as a child oh so (laughs) i I really want to see what he does with it i think he'll make it really creepy oh yeah i know i mean you've got to uh, bear in mind it's still (laughs) pinocchio but at the end of the day, it is like a wooden puppet. So yeah. it's like, if it wasn't the slightest, slightest bit creepy, I'd, you know, it's not really Pinocchio. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so the big, the big ones on this upcoming films was the three new Star Wars movies that have been announced. The first one comes in twenty twenty two, I think. Yep. Yeah. Twenty twenty two, and then every other year in December, similar to the t- current trilogy. So twenty twenty two, then twenty four, and then twenty six. Yeah, and that was the reason why in our next big talk, Avatar was pushed back. I mean, it's about the seventy fourth pushback <laughs> for this sequel. Um, it won't even feel like a sequel by the time it comes out because everyone would have forgotten about the first one. If you want to put this in pers- perspective, uh, the first sequel was supposed to be released in two thousand and sixteen. Yeah, we would have seen it by now. Yeah. Been like, woo, it was amazing. <laughs> so was... I remember I was about nine, I think, when I went to go and see the first one. I thought, wow, I'm not going to go and see the sequel until I'm like 16. And well, I'm now 20 and I still haven't seen the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, we were always looking forward to like the sequel. Like They announced it and I was like, yes, wow, I can't wait. And they kept pushing it back and pushing it back. And But hopefully it will be worth the wait. I think by the time it comes out... Um, Ironically enough, Avatar will not be the highest grossing <laughs> film ever. Um, that will be overtaken by a film we will talk more about in a little yeah. while. Um, but yeah, I mean, the whole 
they've most of them are very bland. I mean, post twenty twenty, it's most like it's it's literally just it's, listed as untitled Disney yeah. film, and I don't personally see the reason why they do it past twenty. Obviously, you want to talk about Star Wars and Avatar. But like in 2021, there's like 10 listed films that are just untitled, untitled, yeah, untitled. Yeah, I, d- I don't get why they do that because obviously Marvel did a similar thing a few years ago when it released their upcoming films and you had Doctor Strange, Black Panther and it gets you really excited because you're like, wow, I can't wait for these films but, but this, I, I don't even know what to think about this. Yeah, <laughs> I don't the, get what of these are. Exactly. In 2019, they've got all the films in 2019 listed yeah. and most of them we knew were coming. Um Obviously, Tolkien's out now. You've got the live-action Aladdin, which we didn't even mention for live-action films. That looks all right, actually, although Will Smith's genie's a bit... Well, Aladdin was never my one of my favourite Disney films, so I don't know whether I'm biased. No, I liked Aladdin, but, yeah. I mean, this, this live-action is going to be... I really don't know what to think of it, because... I like the Aladdin animation a lot, um, and one of my biggest gripes with the current live action like trailer and how it looks is the guy who plays Jafar is handsome. He's that's really not good. Supposed I to thought the, the whole works. idea of this was that she doesn't want to marry him. <laughs> I would. Like, that's not, <laughs> yeah, that's not no, the way it works. Well, I'll, I'll have him. <laughs> it's just like, Ugh, Aladdin. I've seen this guy. It's not the way it works. But the rest of the films that they announced, obviously, The Lion King is coming out. Um, there's another Maleficent film. I don't actually know why they're doing that. Frozen 2, obviously, we knew about. Yeah. Um, the big one is obviously Star Wars, which actually recently got announced as The Rise of Skywalker. Um, and then in 2020, they've just... Mulan is 2020, um, oh. 27th of March. So that's got to be in the works properly. Um, the New Mutants was going to be 2020 i think that is the pushback date it has been moved back to yeah. 2020 hasn't it yeah it's been pushed it's it's now been um delayed till the 3rd of april 2020 if you don't haven't heard of news new mutants um it's basically supposed to be a bit of a horror twist it's a spin-off i think it's from the from the x-men universe yeah. it's a spin-off that it's like a horror twist it's got macy williams in it and anya taylor joy um it, it looked quite interesting i thought it looked like fresh yeah um I think that looks good. I, I'd like to see that. I mean, yeah. the whole idea of mutants is they're a bit different. They're a bit scared. They can be a bit scary, obviously, especially they don't know how to control their powers. Yeah. And I'd like to see kind of darker twist in it. I think that would be good. I think the Dark Phoenix that's coming out with, um, what's the actress's name? It's, Sophie it's, Tate. That, Sophie, Sophie Turner, Turner. That's it. Um, Sophie Turner. I think she looks great. And I think that could be a really dark film. The whole idea of Jean Grey is that she has this thing yeah. inside of her. So I think that... I mean, I'm a little bit sceptical because it it's had four pre-screenings so far with test audiences and all four of them have had bad um, have had bad reactions. Even after the re-films, people were laughing during a, de- a, a, a certain death scene that happens in the film. Yeah, I mean, the X-Men has always been a bit of contra- controversy. I think yeah. the only solid X-Men films people can think of, like really solid, are Days of Future Past and Logan. Yeah. I think the first class was good, um, but... Logan is by far the best, and then I love Days of Future Past as yeah. well. Um, but speaking of Marvel, obviously, uh, Disney did announce as part of their list there were Marvel films announced. Um, there's going to be two next year, which I believe one of them is probably going to be Guardians, or is that 2021? Guardians starts filming next year. Okay, um, so I guess they they could cram it in. I, th- if, I think one of when. them. I think one of them might actually be the Black Widow film because I've heard that because that I've heard rumors oh, yeah. about the Black Widow film, um, but obviously past spider-man they haven't really like with obviously phase three they announced loads of films in advance but we haven't really got any idea of what's coming yeah there's just rumors at this point but they've announced that there's two marvel films in 2020 there is three in 2021 and then three in 2022 that would be guardians and i think four four (laughs) try saying that five times yeah four four more four (laughs) i think that that's on the horizon as well yeah because chris uh, hemsworth did actually get renewed for two more films um obviously thor four and another one which ties into endgame which we'll obviously yeah we'll talk about that and not a big review um, but yeah, I mean, Indiana. There's an un, there's another Indiana Jones film. Oh really? That, yeah. There, uh, in 2021, there was an untold Indiana Jones film announced on the list. Oh, they're just going to be wheeling Harrison Ford out yeah, like into the really, caves at this point. I don't really know why they didn't just leave that that alone. I yeah. think that was a great old old um, trilogy when it's four films. Yeah. Now. I mean, I, I loved the Indiana Jones when I was growing up. Yeah, they were, like, definitely. One of my favorite films, and it's a bit disappointing to see them just carrying on like 
pumping more of them out like this. Exactly. Um, and it is a shame. I think some of them make sense, but I don't know why there was any reason to bring back Indiana Jones. Um, but no, the the lists are out. Uh, standard standard things you see on there. Star Wars was the big one. Obviously, yeah. Avatar 2 got pushed back because of the Star Wars films. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of ambig- ambig- ambiguity over Marvel Phase 4. Um, Spider-Man... Uh, far from home the new trailer was released this week so we got a little bit of a deeper look into the film uh, there was a lot of stuff that they couldn't show in the first trailer because this is set after endgame so uh now we've got the new trailer uh it's showing all the after effects of what of the events that happened in endgame which we'll talk about later um and uh that's supposed to be the end of phase three of marvel so there's a lot of like uh like uh, we we don't we just don't know what phase four is going to be on. Isn't it? It's a lot of yeah. speculation and wondering because um, Marvel has done what they've done so well is since phase one to three they've had the whole Infinity Stone saga, the whole Infinity saga. Thanos was kind of in the background. He's been he's been brought right to the foreground, and they summed it up perfectly in Endgame. Right? Yeah, I thought the Spider Man Spider Man was originally rumored to start phase four, but it's been confirmed to end phase three. Yeah. Um, and I think Tom Holland will be the next kind of Robert Downey Jr. I think yeah. he'll be Spider-Man for the next 10 years, I think. Because <laughs> th- he's obviously already spoiled that apparently there's a Spider-Man 3 coming out after Far From Home. Yeah. Um, so, and obviously I assume they'll probably do not an Avengers film, but some kind of team-up film because they have got enough of the newer cast to build a new... And obviously the Avengers in the comics wasn't always the six. They've had so many different lineups. I have a really funny feeling that at the X Men are gonna be the big the big lot in phase four. Because uh the the X Men are involved in a lot in the comics. So I I, I just I, I have an inkling that they're they're just gonna play a massive part. Obviously that's a that's a huge setup. They've got to recast everyone. Yeah, they are. Um and they do they will have to do that, I think. They might keep some of them because in the new Far From Home trailer, which we can actually talk about, yeah. um, Quentin Blake, obviously Mysterio, is played by Jake Gyllenhaal. I cannot wait for yeah. that. Um but there is a scene where they do talk about a multiverse and that's huge if that's true. There's been a lot of speculation online that maybe Mysterio was lying about that because obviously he's a trick star yeah. and well, it might not be true. The funny thing about this is in the trailer Mysterio is like using powers against monsters and stuff. He doesn't have any powers other than the illusion. power of illusion. Exactly. So, that, yeah. that's, that's his whole shtick, as it were. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to what they do with Mysterio. He's a villain they haven't done. They've done like every other villain they can in the Spider-Man mm, Let's face it, Jake films. Gyllenhaal can make anything look good. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I'm a massive fan of Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Um, but obviously he spoke about a multiverse and people have been speculating if that is true, that is an easy way to bring in the X-Men yeah. and the other big fox um, group, which is the Fantastic Four, which deserve so much credibility that they have not got, <laughs> and I beg, beg Marvel to do do them justice because I love the Fantastic Four. Reed Richards is actually one of the strongest and most smartest characters in the comics. So I would, it's gotten because you'd always look back and think I'd love to see him interact with Chris Evans' yeah. Iron Man or um, weren't Robert Fantastic Jr. Four the ones that started it all as well? Wasn't wasn't that Stan Lee's first comic? Yeah, it was either that or like Thor. Thor was early on. Um, Iron Man was early on. Um, correcting myself a minute ago, I did actually say Chris Evans is Iron Man. I meant Chris Evans is Captain America, of course. <laughs> um, but I'd love to see those interact. It's a shame that we won't get that. But obviously, what Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. and all the other guys have done with their characters ended perfectly in game, as we'll speak about in a bit. Um, and they deserve their rest, really. They've brought the character to light, absolutely like nailed it. Um, and. I mean, I'll be gutted. I'm gutted to see the event, the Avengers, kind of done now. Um, yeah. And I don't know where Marvel's going to take it. I'm excited. Uh, the films you can probably assume they'll do are the likes of Doctor Strange sequel, uh, a Black Panther sequel. Uh, obviously, they've announced Spider Man. They'll do a Black Widow film, which is in that which bit in the rumored. Yeah, I think um, four, four, more four is pretty much a given now. Yeah, um, the fourth Thor film will probably <laughs> come out. Um, Guardians three, obviously, um, yeah. is a big one, and then they'll have to announce some other new ones. And obviously, everyone will be a bit nervous going into them because obviously you never know what to expect with new films. But you know, look at the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Pretty much nobody have heard of them, and oh. now they're like one of the best like everyone's favorite heroes and considering they've confirmed that 
most of the ex i think they've they've said the majority of what they're bringing over from fox is going to change it's going to be it's going to be marvelized <laughs> apart from deadpool so i think that's a given that we're going to get a third deadpool film in the marvel universe because they they don't want to touch him yeah exactly um it'd be rude to change him yeah. now ryan Reynolds has come in and absolutely perfected that character feel, he was born to yeah. play Deadpool I mean it breaks my heart to let Patrick Stewart Ian McKellen um, well Hugh it's Patrick Jackman. Yeah, yeah Hugh Jackman and that, that it breaks my heart to let them go and maybe replace them but at the same time I feel like the X-Men universe needed it yeah it needs a reboot yeah. and Kevin Feige and all the guys at Marvel will hopefully do it justice um, it should have it should have ended with Logan um, or or it should have ended with Days of Future Past, but then they brought out Apocalypse, which was yeah, I, I really hated mm, it. <laughs> they didn't need to. No, um, they they didn't need Days to. Days of Future Past. It. Days of Future Past to Logan was perfect. The yeah. Apocalypse thing was just a bit of a bit of a mess. But most of the X Men films have been. I don't think there's been many. X Men One was all right. X Men Two was okay. Um, the Last Stand, the third one, wasn't very good. Yeah, I mean X Men. I feel like a lot of, there is a lot of respect towards the X-Men franchise because the first X-Men film was the one that kicked off this whole like um, comic book movie uh, craze. X- X-Men was the film that came out that proved that comic book movies could be cool because any comic book film before that had been like mediocre at best. Yeah. And uh, even Chris Nolan himself said his Batman trilogy was inspired by the first X-Men film. So I feel like we've we've got a lot to thank the X-Men films for. Um, the only problem is they haven't aged very well. No, it's the same with the Fantastic Four films yeah. though. Um, Chris I mean, Evans obviously played a character in that yeah. film. Film, and now he went on to be Captain America, who was a much better received character. I mean, if someone was to have watched all the Marvel films, then they go, "Hey, I'm going to go and watch the X Men films now." They'd probably find the first X Men film to be very mediocre because it's got like a really basic storyline, like a basic superhero storyline. Um, you know, you got a bad guy, you got a good guy, and you've got uh, Wolverine going out and saving the world. Uh, so, but. Like, that's just how it started. That's how Iron Man was. Yeah. You look at the first Iron Man film, there was never these complex storylines that they have now. Uh, you, you compare the first Iron Man film to Avengers Endgame, which we'll get into, and the storylines are so much more complex, but they've built it up to that. You know, they haven't rushed into yeah. it, and that's what DC could take a few pages out from because, <laughs> you know, three films in, they're releasing the Justice League. Whereas, obviously, Marvel released the first Avengers six films in, and that took a lot of time to build up to. And obviously, it was slowly building up to what this has been. And I think they've ended it perfectly. I Um, think the problem with DC is they keep on redoing everything. It took Marvel 22 films to get up to this. They haven't... The only thing they've changed, the only only little mistake they made was The Incredible Hulk, because obviously Edward Norton backed out because he wasn't impressed of how the Hulk film went went away, so they had to recast him as Mark Ruffalo. It would have been interesting to see Edward Norton in the rest of the Avengers I keep on thinking about this. I just don't think it would work. I think Edward Norton's too much of a, like, you know, he he looks down on superhero films now. Yeah, he doesn't... you look at Mark Ruffalo and you yeah. think scientist when Mark he's Ruffalo, acting. Like, it's yeah. so, he fits in with them it all. Was, it was great. I mean, uh, that's one of the recasting things that had, they, they did yeah. really well. But like in terms of like uh, continue out, con, uh, continue, continue blah, 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 blah. <laughs> in terms of <laughs> it being a fluent uh, arc, that's Nailed the it. only little blip there is, um, is that like little recasting the Hulk. But, yeah. but other than that, like from day one, from Iron Man, you've had this slow progression over to phase four of this Thanos arc. You know, we've known about Thanos since the first Avengers film. That's how long they've been planning this for. Yeah, yeah the first Avengers film, he was there, wasn't he? Yeah. He, he briefly made an appearance. Then he started appearing more. They had a after credit scene where he grabs the gauntlet. They had the scene in Guardians where they actually first showed him on screen talking to Ronin. Um, but, yeah, they, they, they did it really well. They slowly introduced him as this big bad. And yeah. I mean, I'm excited to see who the next big bad guy is because it could be so many people. The three names that I've heard... Um, Rumoured are Kang, who is a Kang the Conqueror, who is a time, all that time. And obviously, as we're speaking in game, they did kind of mess with time. Um, you've got Doctor Doom, obviously, as part of the Fantastic Four. It depends how they. I, I really, I really hope they do him right <laughs> yeah, because they've really underpowered him in every single film. He hasn't seemed like that much of a threat. No, he he's one of the strongest villains in the comics. Not only because he's got powers, but he's he's smart, his intelligence. He's yeah. he's literally almost on par with Reed Richards, and he is really intelligent in the comics. But 
Uh, and the other one I've heard is Galactus, who was also in Fantastic oh, of Four. Of course, yeah. Um, who was also in Fantastic Four, and they really, really did him dirty. Like, <laughs> it hurts to say it. but Wasn't he just a cloud? He was basically just a cloud. And you only <laughs> ever saw his helmet, his, his normal purple yeah. pointy helmet. You only really saw it in the cloud. Like, you never and saw... It's, it's like Doctor Doom. In every single Fantastic Four film they've done, he's just like a weird creepy dude who yeah. wears a mask. And exactly. It's, it's unsure so much what more his actual powers are. Yeah, there's so much more to him than that. So I'd, I would love Galactus. I think that really hits home because um, they've got to do well to beat Thanos. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, well, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see where Marvel go with it. Yeah, because be I feel like the problem DC have had, they've not had that build-up. They uh, started off with Suicide Squad, it didn't go very well, so now they're rebooting it. And then they did one Batman versus Superman film, one Wonder Woman film, then immediately jumped to Justice League. They were like, right, now, now we can make another Avengers, and it didn't work. No. I, I feel like the problem with DC is that they've had a lot to look up to, and they've just tried to jump into it rather than have... Rather than start from the beginning like Marvel did. Yeah, and work up. Um, yeah. Marvel have deserved everything they've got. Yeah. Um, Endgame looks like it's actually going to be the highest grossing film ever. And that is just... It just pays homage to what I mean, Marvel have done. I, I know Avatar 2 won't beat it, but I still find it funny that it took them 22 films to beat Avatar and then just round the corner is Avatar 2. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, in the time between Avatar yeah. and Avatar 2, there's been about 20 <laughs> films of Marvel. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like Avatar has done very well because it had quite a mediocre story. Like, it was basically Pocahontas uh, I liked in Ava- space. Unpopular opinion, I liked Avatar. Yeah, I liked Avatar. When it first came out when it I first came loved it. oh yeah when it, it first came out film. what you got to realize is the cgi and effects that were used yeah. in that film were way ahead of james, the time james cameron is a business man as well he invented 3d he invented the 3d camera as we know it so people looked at avatar they were like oh my god you can you it, it feels like you're in the room so yeah. they went and go and see it to go and like experience this new 3d technology and obviously obviously it looked better it was way ahead of its time so that's why it did very well yeah and, and obviously the second one unless james Cameron's got something else up his sleeve. They're rumored that they've filmed a lot of it actually underwater. Like he's he went to like the uh, the yeah. Marianas Trench or whatever it's called, the deepest point in the ocean. Like he went like so <laughs> they far they down. They made a in the skit about marine. it in South Park. Yeah, <laughs> like, they, they, I don't know what they're gonna do, but apparently it was filmed. A lot of it was filmed underwater, which yeah. just makes me just my mind just boggles thinking about what they're gonna do with that film. But James Cameron's gonna want to top he, it. We've we waited have... this long. <laughs> have to has to be something but worthwhile. He's got of like invented four. D to to get it to be Endgame. Well, it'd be like seven D by yeah. the time we get Avatar two. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so here we are. What did you think of Endgame? Oh, where do I start? Um, so to review Endgame, it's my favourite Marvel film. I can instantly point that out, uh, and that wasn't an easy feat to beat. Um, for me, obviously, I know Jess will get into this. I think she prefers Infinity War to Endgame, but. I do. Uh, For me, Endgame was almost perfect. Um, There was a few flaws uh, here and there, but not that took away from the enjoyment of the film. Uh, People nitpick and people look at plot holes, but but to make a film perfect with no plot holes is impressive. Um, So, I mean, the last warning for spoilers, uh, because now we're getting to the film, but obviously they did a lot of time travel, um... Thanos is wiped out like five minutes into the film, which I think shocked everyone. Um, and then, but he's still in it because obviously a previous version of him goes forward in time yeah. and fights them, the Avengers. Uh, to basically just explain this to people who haven't, uh, haven't seen it, but for some yeah, reason so... <laughs> don't mind it being completely spoiled for them. <laughs> they do a Back to the Future. They go back in time to reverse what happened. In, in Infinity War, you've got a guy who uh, he believes that people uh, that too many planets have died over starvation due to a lack of resources. So he collects these uh, things called the Infinity Stones. I think there's there's five of Six. them. Six of them. Six of them. <laughs> and they've been uh, slowly introduced over the 22 Marvel That's films. why it was so good, because they didn't rush into it. You know, the first yeah. one, the first the w- one was... Thor, I believe. Yeah, and we didn't even know there were six. Uh, only comic Actually, book readers that, would have a, that, known. That's a lie. It wasn't even... I don't know which one came out first, but it was, was in it? Captain America because the Tesseract was in Captain America. But they really brought into light two in the Avengers. Which came first? The first four film or the first Captain America? I'll look it up because, as we're talking. Because, yeah, they both had an Infinity Stone. Anyway, so... 
he he wants to collect these six infinity stones um that they're supposed to be the most powerful things in the universe they each represent a different thing so you've got time you've got the planet stone the soul stone the mind stone where have you gone sorry power mind soul reality space and time yeah that's and uh, with with six of these stones, he can become the most powerful being in the universe. And what he wants to use them for, he's got one mission, and he wants to snap his fingers and get uh, and get rid of half of the, half of all, all life, life in the universe. all living creatures. Yeah. Half of all living creatures go, and he believes that he's almost the prophet. He almost yeah. this is his destiny. You know, he'll do anything for this, and that's why. It- they've, you know, they've built up a villain in Thanos so well yeah. that he comes in and he's like. You know, I'm here. Like I, I am the destiny. I am inevitable. Yeah. You can't beat me. This, this is your future. He, he has been the mastermind from the first Avengers film. He's, he's been the guy behind it all because he wants these six stones. And uh, basically, in Infinity War, which is the film before the one we just went to go and see, he succeeds in it. He snaps his fingers, and half of our heroes that we've like spent these twenty-two films falling in love with and like and experiencing their journey, they, they just snap out of existence and turn to dust. And that's how the film ends. It just leaves you sitting in your cinema chair, just going, wow. And then Endgame, they do a Back to the Future. They go through a time... They, they Quantum realm. Yeah, they, they, they make go a f- quantum time machine, basically, because... If you haven't seen the Ant-Man films, it's all about the quantum realm. Yeah. And uh, basically, I mean, Scott Lang comes back and explains to them that maybe they could use that to travel back in time because the whole point of the film is they go into it and Thanos has destroyed the stones, right? They, they go into it... And they come into it and they're like, right, we'll use the stones to get them all back. We'll go and beat Thanos um, because Captain Marvel obviously comes in and she's really powerful. So they go with her um, right to where Thanos is. He's retired by this point. He's a nice farmer. He's enjoying his life. He's like, I've done my deed. I'm I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm relaxing. And then they just straight up murder him. I mean, yeah, Thor aims for the head. Um, You'll get that joke if you've seen Infinity War. And... Yeah, I mean, he says, I've used the stones, you can't do anything unlucky, yeah. see you later, guys, I win. <laughs> and then uh, it cuts to five years in the future and all hope is lost. You you know, you get see- scenes of this street and there's just bin bags piled up because, the, the, you know, you don't have enough people to come and collect rubbish anymore and you've got all these, like... Uh, self-help meetings captain america's doing uh double a's fun fact for you um i think it was joe russo one of the russo brothers actually was in that scene he made a cameo oh, in the scene you know the guy talking about the date that he yeah. went on that was one of the directors <laughs> i can't i don't know if it was and i think it was uh, anthony or, it was anthony or joe russo i can't remember which one it was um but he he made a cameo in his own movie which i thought was quite funny but yeah you know they've got all these stone pillars with everyone that's died on it um or disappeared yeah um, and then they then uh all of a sudden ant-man comes into the picture who the presumed was dead and he says we can go back in time so what they do is they go back in time to get these stones in a certain type points in the universe well i think it won't make that much damage to the uh, if you don't think about it too much it makes sense <laughs> and, uh, yeah well and, <laughs> it is explained quite well yeah. if you've seen doctor strange the ancient one comes back tilda swinton comes back to reprise her role as the yeah. ancient one and she, i thought that was she really says well it won't work unless after you've used them you come back and you return them to their right so places. as if they never left yeah um so yeah they it's awesome because you have this whole planning scene thor is by the way he's a bit overweight now he's a bit kind of depressed sad because yeah. he feels like Which, it's his fault. I liked his change for his character because he's depressed. He's drinking every day. That's what happens. You don't look like Chris Hemsworth if you've been it, drinking beer. Exactly. And also, uh, funnily enough, he's one of my favourite Thors, the beard, when he ties up at the yeah. end and he has his whole mask, uh, his whole outfit on. Yeah. You know, he looks he, like a, he looks a Norse like warrior. Norse, uh, he looks like a Norse yeah. Viking god, which is what he's supposed to be. I really I really like his new look. I think um, he'll probably, he's inevitably going to tone up again in uh, whatever future films he's going to be in, because it's Chris Hemsworth. But. Yeah, so continuing on, obviously they go back in time, they get all the stones. We've got these awesome throwbacks to the old films. Yeah. Um, I think they go back into the first Avengers uh, film in 2012. Yeah, you have a brief scene from God. Guardians 1, Peter Quill dancing at the start, um, doing his whole jig in the yeah. Power Stone. Um, uh, Hawkeye and Black Widow go to Vormir in 2014. So uh, you've basically got three teams. One goes to uh, New York in 2012 to get the Mind, uh, mind Stone from Loki Scepter, the Space Stone from the Tesseract, yeah. and... Um, the time stone from yeah. the sanctum sanctorum you have one that goes to 2014 uh, to get the soul stone and the 
Power Stone, and then the and others then, go. Yeah, they they one lot go to Asgard to get the Thor and Rocket go yeah. to get the Ether, which yeah. is in Thor two. And uh, basically, it's like a, a goodbye to uh, Phase Four of Marvel because a lot of these heroes aren't going to come back; their contracts have ended, and that that's it for now. And after the events of Endgame, some of them are dead. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll get into yeah. that. I mean, the uh, Hawkeye and Black Widow go to um, Vormir. Yeah, Red Skull Where, comes back, explains the whole situation. No, again. yeah, so, for some reason, no one felt the need to tell them that they would have to sacrifice yeah, see, one. these are the plot holes I'm talking yeah. about. No it's, one it's mentioned. It's a good thing they sent Hawkeye and Black Widow together and not two people that like barely knew each other. Like, you know, like, it's yeah, good thing the they whole didn't idea send... was you have to sacrifice that yeah. of which you love. So what if they sent, like... Ant-Man and Rocket. <laughs> Just like, what? Well, yeah. Oh, no, we're trapped these, here. These are the plot holes I'm talking about, but you have to kind of look past them and look yeah. at what the film is. Um, sad, Sadly, obviously... I, I knew we were going to lose one of them. Yeah. It was Black Widow. Scarlett Johansson's character did die in the film. Um, but I think she might come back for the Black Widow f- solo film because I, I think, think it might be a prequel. Yeah, I think that could be easily be a que- prequel because she's a, she's a spy and she's got a really interesting backstory as well. We saw a little bit of it in, what was it, Age of Ultron? Age of Ultron when she had back flashbacks. Yeah, we, we, see, we get flashbacks of her training to be a, a, a Russian spy. And uh, so, and some of the stuff that they have to go through, uh, the go through. It's like a it's like a, a school for girls where they get trained to be these like um, these female assassins. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's really interesting. They could do like a, a Red Sparrow kind of uh, yeah. film. There's so much they can do with it. But back onto Endgame, she dies. They get yeah. all the stones back. Um, uh, and the uh, Cap, Tony, and uh, Bruce all go to the Avengers. They get the mine. They get the oh, Ant Man. Man is also there. They get the scepter. Yeah, the Tesseract they, falls into Loki's yeah, hands. Yeah, they mess up, and obviously that perfectly sets up Loki's, Loki's TV show. Yeah, Loki's TV show. Um, which I think will be a spin-off. Uh, that Loki is now still alive, and these are the plot points you had to look at because then yeah, the events just, of Thor two happen and things yeah, like that. Yeah, you just have to not think about it too much, and um, you'll be, you, you'll enjoy the film. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed the film yeah. what it, for what it was. Um, it was basically a massive fan service payoff. Yeah. Um, but they fail. Um, so Tony and Cap have to go back even further. You see an old Hank Pym. Tony has a nice heart to heart with his father. Yeah. They get the Tesseract. They get everything. All the Infinity Stones. They come back into the Avengers and compound. Also, one thing that um, that needs to be pointed out is Captain America throughout his whole story because he starts off in the 19, uh, 1940s um, because he's created to uh, fight for World War Two. he's supposed to be the super soldier and he falls in love with a woman and at the very end of Captain America 1 he ends up getting frozen under ice he wakes up 70 years in the future in the first Avengers yeah, film Peggy, Peggy and, Carter's yeah. old and he's grown up without her she's yeah. grown up without him and she dies in Civil War I think it yeah. is yeah uh, and all the way through this, he he's just completely heartbroken. He he still carries around a picture of her with him because he she was love for his life. And when they go back in the past, not only does Ta- Tony see his father, but uh, Captain America also gets a glimpse of a Peggy of Peggy through the glass. Yeah, um, and that was sad. And you know they they give a lot of heart heart wrenching yeah. moments in the film because Captain America doesn't have much in the future. He he's got no family and he doesn't really fit in either. Like his his sole purpose in the future is the Avengers. Like yeah. that's what that's what his life revolves around. Like I can picture all the other ones like doing stuff in their spare time. Yeah, but Tony, like, we forgot to even mention yeah. Tony has a kid in this. Oh film. yeah, Tony, Tony Stark Tony has starts, a kid. Starts a family when half the universe blinks out of existence. Tony thinks now is the right thank, time thank, to thankfully <laughs> him and, <laughs> sit thankfully, down. Thankfully him and Pepper survive <laughs> yeah. and they actually have a kid. Morgan, um, who is very cute. I really liked her in the yeah. film. I thought they did her really well. Didn't give her too much screen time. It's a backstory to Tony. It gives him something to fight for. But obviously they get all the stones. They go back. Um, however, there's this whole thing. Nebula switches with an old version of Nebula. Basically Thanos, Gamora and Nebula from 2014 find out what they're doing. Yeah. Um, Thanos realises that in the future he succeeds. They're trying to undo what he does in the future. Nebula then switches and goes back and then brings Thanos from 2014 into 2022 or wherever the film's set. I mean, it's easier to just watch it and then... Because <laughs> this is really hard to explain. I'm glad they gave Nebula some kind of, like... Story More, arc. more yeah. attention. Yeah. Because I was really worried that they'd put her in the background. Because in the comic book, it's Nebula that gets that picks up the gauntlet. Um, I think Adam Warlock is mm-hmm. the one that defeats Thanos. Mm-hmm. And Nebula's the one that then picks up the gauntlet and blinks Thanos out of existence. And... Um, 
So I was really worried they would make her a background character because she she's obviously a very important part in the comic book. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm glad they gave her a little bit of attention. They did. Yeah. Um and also I love, I love her character. I, I really like Nebula. I like Karen Gillan. Karen Gillan's a good yeah. actress as well. And so the culmination happens. You've got Thor, Cap, and Iron Man. They fend off Thanos. Thanos destroys yeah. the Avengers compound. And then uh, they... Obviously, Tony, by this point, has built a new Infinity Gauntlet. Hulk snaps everyone back, but they're not quite back. They think they're I, back, and it's all... I've completely don't... forgotten that they've been snapped back at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Cap, one of the biggest moments in the film is Cap wields Mjolnir. Yeah. Thor brings back Mjolnir from the past, and Cap actually wields it, yeah. um, which was an amazing moment. Everyone loved it. Yeah. Uh, so, and I, I personally love that moment. Cap is my favourite hero. I've seen him wield Mjolnir like he does in the comics. Yeah. Because now he is worthy. People think he he, he wasn't. He budged it in uh, Age of Ultron. But I think from the point where he told Tony uh, about his parents in Civil War, you know, he then becomes, like, worthy, as it were. I mean, I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't see Black Widow wield it because she can also pick up Mew Mew, Mew in the uh, comic books that, as well. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, which yeah. I thought would have been a really big surprise for uh, people who weren't aware of this because obviously Captain America like, is, is a little bit obvious. Um, you know, like if you think about all the Avengers, I'd think Captain America is the one that's worthy. Yeah. But uh, Black Widow, that that would have been like a huge surprise. Yeah. Um. But it all comes together. They have this massive end end battle, like yeah. all of the Avengers versus Thanos and his army. They struggle against Thanos. Um. They. Uh. You know, I, I thought that was a little bit weird because in Infinity War. They seem to be able to take him on quite well, 1v1, but all of a sudden when they're in a group, they, they're they struggling. But I guess that's because they've had this five-year wait. They haven't been training. They're not in their superhero mode. Uh, Tony's been a dad for five years. And yeah. Thor's been getting fat and Captain America's <laughs> been going to um, double A meetings. But, but yeah. yeah, I mean, that's it. Tony, Tony, unfortunately, gets the gauntlet off of Thanos after some massive fight. Um, everyone obviously comes back that was snapped from uh, the before and Tony obviously his final words are I am Iron Man he snaps his fingers killing himself but wiping out Thanos and everyone else so Tony is the hero but unfortunately we do lose Iron Man in the film Um, so that obviously explains why Robert Downey Jr's contract has expired we lose Tony um, we get this massive funeral scene it's very sad Um, and that's that Um, the other main actor that did uh, run out of contract time is Chris Evans. His character is also um, completely sealed off and written off. See, this um, is where the surprise came for me because I, I just knew Tony was going to die. It was it was inev- inevitable, really. <laughs> he started it, and then I, I just f- thought, you know, he's going to end it, but he's going to die. But uh, th- they had a little twist at the end. You know, it wasn't over yet. Uh, they they send Captain America to uh, deliver all the Infinity Stones back to where they belong, and then uh, they tell him, you know, you will see you in about five seconds. That's when you'll be back, and he never does come back. All of a sudden, they turn around and they see some old guy on a bench, and it's Captain America because he uh, returned to 1940 and lived uh, his life. Yeah, with decided Peggy. to stay there. And so these are, again, the plot holes. If if he lived there, does that create... Yeah. But the but the Russo brothers have come out and kind of said it, it creates a known paradox that Cap did live in that universe and it creates an alternate timeline. But he comes back, he then passes on his shield to Sam, Fal- yeah. Sam Wilson, the Falcon, who does take up the mantle of Captain America in the comics for a bit. So we've got a new Captain America. Chris Evans is retired, or, Captain, or uh, Steve Rogers is retired. Tony Stark has passed away. And that is the culmination of it. The whole film summed it all up perfectly, yeah. ended phase four perfectly. Now on to Spider-Man, who I think will now carry the franchise forward. Um, you've got enough superheroes to make a new Avenger team. But the original six almost have have had their time. You know, you, yeah. Thor's coming back for a couple. He actually ends the film with the Guardians. So there are rumours that he's in Guardians 3. Which I really love. And also it makes a lot of sense as well because they're going up against Adam Warlock, which is one of the most powerful beings in the comic books. And the Guardians themselves aren't going to be able to do it with their little guns. They'll probably die in the first five seconds. So they kind of need four to yeah. have a, a single chance against them. Because I think even though Adam Warlock is a hero in the comic books... Um, the way Guardians 2 ended up sounded like he's going to start, at least start off as a villain in yeah. 3. Yeah, but anyway, Endgame was perfect for me. Near, damn near perfect, if not. 
Um, and I mean, that's my review of it. I thought it was great. Sad to see it all end, but it just means I'll have to rewatch all twenty two, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> see, I I, uh, I prefer. Like, I think you said this earlier. I preferred Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Just uh, just because uh, enjoyment r- wise, I was more surprised by Infinity War than I was about Endgame. Both of them were spoiled for me because I went to go and see them <laughs> quite late. I, I knew in Infinity War that half the heroes died, and then for Endgame, I knew that uh, Black Widow and Iron Man would die, and um, and that Thanos would be beheaded in the beginning. So I had no spoil. I had no uh, barely any surprises for either of them. But yet, Infinity War was the one that felt like more like oh, I wasn't expecting that. Mm. Whereas Endgame, I get your point. yeah, I feel like it's because we had that time in Endgame to come up with theories and for everybody to guess what was going to happen. But uh, yeah, overall, uh, it's is is very close. But yeah, I did prefer Infinity War. No, that's fair enough. Yeah. I, I still enjoyed Endgame. It was, yeah, a, it was a great, great ending. Like they did really well. It could have been terrible. <laughs> uh, it could, they could have gone Game of Thrones and made it awful. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, we could briefly mention Game of Thrones. I think yeah. we've been going for so long now. Um, we can briefly mention Game of Thrones where we're at. We lost a few characters. We're now on episode five, going on to yeah. episode five. Um, been a bit of a rough patch. The first two episodes people liked. They were putting almost everything on episode three, which was the long night, the Battle of Winterfell yeah. with the Night King. I feel like the death of this show has been the has been no longer making ten episodes per season. Yeah. I mean, even they could have even stretched it for another season. I think that's been the death of this show. Yeah, they, yeah. They, it, feel, it feels rushed. It feels yeah. like it's too predictable I now. I mean, everyone's blaming the writers, but I can't even blame the writers for this because I feel like if I was to sit down and they tell me I've got six episodes to wrap the whole thing up, I think I, I would also be skipping over certain scenes mm-hmm. and. Yeah. It seems like it takes a day to get from one place to another, yeah. or less. Um, but if you want to put this into a perspective, in the first uh, season, it it they it takes them about three episodes to get two kings, uh, two from King's Land into the north for the king to arrive there. Then it takes them until episode three or four for them to then return to King's Landing. So it's a month's travel. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this episode, they just they teleported there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so. Um, it, that, that's that's an ep- that's it, the teleport there in within the same episode. So that's a perspective on how rushed this is. Mm. You've got certain scenes that we've been waiting for that just get skipped out, like John telling his family that he's Aegon Tell Targaryen. We don't even see their reactions. They cut to the next next uh, scene of Sansa t- telling Tyrion that John is Aegon Targaryen. We don't see his reaction either. We just skip onto the next thing. It's just it's a mess. Yeah, but- it's gotten because. There were there are there are very few shows out there for me yeah. that ended perfectly. Breaking Bad being one of them, but that's because they gave them all the time they needed. They yeah. actually extended the final season into two halves, and they got all the time in the world to perfect the ending of that show. And I feel like the this they've not thought about it. I don't know who to blame for this. I feel like it's the studio really because that's where the budget's coming from. I feel like they had enough budget to make two lots of ten in yeah. these final I, two I series. I would have rathered um, uh, the episode three to episode three look gorgeous. But, you know, uh, I would have preferred it to look a little bit less gorgeous and to have had more episodes and some mm-hmm. decent writing. Yeah, I mean, it hurts, but they've still got two episodes to redeem yeah. themselves. It could still end well, but I am worried. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's because they've deviated from the books, but I don't know how many times George R. R. Martin needs to spell out that the the TV show is following the the uh you know the main path that he laid out for them he yeah. said the only difference is going to be is going to be side characters so it's going to end the same place as the books it's just that they've got far less time to mm. actually get to that place than the exactly. books exactly um i'm also a little bit worried for the books actually because the last book ended the, uh, the last book ended um it's it wasn't just season 5 because some of them sp- um some of some of the storylines were then continued to season 6 so it la- it ended with john dying Daenerys is now with the Dothraki. Tyrion hasn't met Daenerys yet. He's still stuck outside Marine. Um, Varys has declared that his true intentions, he wants to uh, serve the realm and he wants to follow the Targaryens because he believes the Lannisters are terrible for the realm. Um, Sansa is still at the Eyrie because they gave her storyline to a different character. Um, some uh, girl called Jane Paul married Ramsay instead. Tyrion has just escaped from Ramsay um what else um sam is now at the citadel i think um and yeah i think that's it for the main storyline so and we've only got two more books left so the the two books have got to wrap it up very quickly as well 
Yeah, we'll see. I, I don't know when he's actually going to get around to writing them. To I feel honest. like he's waiting now. I he's either stuck and he's never going to finish them. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's dug himself into a hole or he is waiting for the show to finish and it will inevitably get more readers that way because people yeah. would have finished the show and they'll be like, right, yeah. I can start the books now. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, the the actors keep on saying episode five is the big one and it is being directed by the same guy that did Hard Home, uh, Battle of the Bastards um, and a few more big battle scenes. So it does have some hope, but at the same time they're paid to promote the show. Mm. Yes, the lot was going to say it's good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely they're not going to say it's terrible. They're not Mark Hamill, um, <laughs> <laughs> who uh, outright <laughs> names Disney for all their failures on the Star Wars universe. But yeah, I, 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 you know, for someone, I'm someone that's been sticking up for this show for ages now and sticking up for the writers. But even I'm feeling a little bit, you know, uh, n- I'm not very hopeful for the next yeah. two episodes. Yeah, yeah, me neither, to be honest, but. I think I'll still enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll enjoy it. I, I just want to see how it ends now. I, I want to see... Because <laughs> yeah. that's how the books books will end as well. I just I just want to see how all this wraps up. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, and I'll still read the books. But I, I, I'm one of those people that can enjoy both. If I enjoy the books and the show. So, you know, well, we'll see, won't we? That's um, that. Yeah, well, we're going to be doing another podcast next week where we'll be either showing <laughs> our excitement for the final <laughs> yeah. episode or we'll be completely disheartened and might have stopped watching the show by that point. Yeah. Um, other things next week is we've got the It Chapter 2 trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully there's more film, game and um, and music news next week and hopefully we'll have Jacob return to us so yeah. we can actually talk about music. Other, <laughs> um, other, other than Disney, just yeah. absolutely taking over the world yeah what, what do you think they'll buy next <laughs> um what's another big company maybe like blue sky <laughs> yeah. or they'll they'll own every Dreamworks. single yeah they'll, they'll buy everything <laughs> I, I, I feel i think there's a uh, monopoly laws and eventually they'll have to they'll be stopped from buying all these big studios <laughs> no because they'll own they'll the monopoly like, laws you know they'll do a rupert murdoch on them they'll be like disney you can't own the world <laughs> 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 yeah exactly oh they'll they'll try yeah they, they can <laughs> <laughs> so uh i'm just gonna i think feel like now's the time to wrap up i was going to talk about the handmaid's tale season three but um we've had a trailer it's coming out the fifth june i'm really excited because i love the handmaid's tale uh, mac doesn't know much about the handmaid's tale so i won't go too much into that uh ghost rider tv series has been announced that's coming out on hulu it's going to be um, based off the Hellstrom comics, and it's going to carry on from his character that was shown in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So we've got uh, Gabriel Luna coming back for it. Um, could be quite interesting. I'm, yeah. I, I haven't been really watching most of the Marvel shows, apart from Daredevil, which I'm obsessed Jessica with. Jessica Jones Season 3, we haven't even announced. Oh, Jessica the Jones Season The final season, season three, of yeah. Jessica Jones, they've recently announced. No trailer, no nothing yet, but they have said it's coming soon. I hope they do a Daredevil, because Daredevil Season 2 wasn't that great, and then obviously... One and three were masterpieces. So I'm hoping Jessica Jones does yeah, the same. So I wasn't that impressive too. No, I mean neither. But yeah. I think that should be because it was so hard for David yeah. Tennant. Yeah, I, I, I kind of realised that David Tennant <laughs> was the one keeping season one up. I mean, like every show David Tennant leaves just falls to bits afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so and then um, another big one is the Sonic a Hedgehog character design scandal. Oh God, what a mess! Where did we start? <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting it to be good anyway. Like from the first poster they showed of his skinny little chicken legs. <laughs> <laughs> what, oh, it, it hurts. what are they doing? <laughs> oh, it hurts. It hurts. If, if, Although they've said they're going to come out and change it for the final yeah, version of I, the film. I, I watched the trailer and then couldn't sleep afterwards. Um, <laughs> it, it looks. It was not even the character design though. The overall film looks odd. A friend of mine wrote a review. Uh, Rhiannon Bevan. I think we shared a blog um, a few podcasts ago. For um, yeah. She, she she wrote the perfect review of the trailer. She said it looks like a uh, car. It looks like an animated film that they wrote before they decided it was going to be Sonic the Hedgehog, and then they just added Sonic the Hedgehog afterwards. That's what it feels like. It looks like it. So uh, yeah, it looks like an absolute mess. But I don't know what people were expecting. It's not going to be the theory of everything. Not quite, <laughs> so, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so th- yeah, that's that's it for this week's um, entertainment room podcast. I do hope this is episode seven because I've been calling it episode <laughs> seven. <laughs> so episode, we- just what you got to do is go. Epi- right, thank you for watching episode. Watching, go. Thank you for listening to episode six. 
Thank you for listening to episode <laughs> seven and just say all of them. Yeah, we'll until... just edit it until we get the right one. <laughs> I think it's episode seven. I trust Chester now. <laughs> I hope it's episode seven. Anyway, uh, thank you for listening and we'll be back again next week and hopefully we'll have the uh, co-host back as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear.